My apologies, Chair Allen. I believe it's working properly now. Okay. So obviously the people that are listed in as attendees, they were able to to see what was going on. So okay. So it was just the link on our website that was down. Um, and okay. I can upload the entire recording afterwards if anybody wanted to see the first part that was missed. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, I was at um, uh, presentations by the applicant or their agent. Um, oh, Claire again. Okay. That Good worked out again. well. <laughs> yes. Um, yes, I'm Claire, and again, I'm the agent representing the landowner on this file. We do have a brief PowerPoint. Uh, I will keep it brief because I know the meeting uh, is a bit long this evening. Thank you. Maybe the clerk could pull up the PowerPoint. Thank you. Here we go. Perfect. Um, next slide, please. Uh, so the lands are located at 349233 4th Concession B in the municipality of Great Highlands. Uh, they're located on the north side of 4th Concession B with a lot area of 42.6 hectares and a lot frontage of 427 meters onto 4th Concession B. Uh, and the uh, lands are an agricultural parcel with a single detached dwelling uh, that is serviced by private well and septic. Next slide, please. Uh, the proposal is for a zoning bylaw amendment to implement a consent. Uh, the consent was approved on uh, June 13th, 2023 at the Committee of Adjustment meeting. That was filed B08-2023. Uh, the purpose of the proposed zoning bylaw amendment is to rezone a portion of the lands to implement that consent. Uh, and the effect will rezone the lands to agricultural exception and rural residential exception. The uh, agricultural exception A1479 will preclude any future residential development on the retained agricultural lands. And the uh, rural residential 480 exception will recognize uh, and permit a lot air, a lot frontage, sorry, of 76 meters on two fourth concession B. Next slide, please. The lands are designated agricultural in the County uh, of Gray official plan and the municipality of Gray Highlands official plan. The severance is limited in size to ensure that no land is removed from agricultural production. And the zoning bylaw amendment will preclude future residential use on the retained lands to ensure they remain agricultural. Um, and MDS calculations were not required for this application. Next slide, please. Uh, the photo on the left is just showing a view of the subject lands from fourth concession B, and the photo on the right shows the lands across the street. Next slide, please. Uh, that was that concludes my uh, comments, and I can answer any questions. Thank you. Okay, great, thank you. So at this time, the municipal planner will advise of any comments received. Um, planner uh, Payne. Um, I think Claire has given a good overview, um, so just comments. Thank you. Sounds good. From the Gray County Planning Department, we have received the following comment. Provided Gray Highlands planning staff are satisfied with the reasoning for how the applicable criteria for a surplus farmhouse severance has been met, county planning staff have no concerns with the subject application. From Gray Highlands Building Services, Gray Highlands Transportation and Public Spaces Services, Gray Highlands Environmental Services, Gray Highlands Fire and Emergency Services, uh, there are no concerns. And I can confirm that we have not received uh, any comments from the public on this file. Okay, thank you for that. Are there any questions from members of council for either our planner or the agent for this file? Okay, I'm not seeing anything, I'll go to the public. Any person present wishing to object to or support the proposed zoning bylaw amendment or have any comments or questions, please indicate and state your name and address. Okay, I'm not seeing anybody raising their hand. Okay. Last chance for council members. Okay. As there's no further discussion, this application will be forwarded to a, a future council meeting for further consideration. Thank you again, Claire.
And Mayor McQueen can join. There we go. Thank you. Item 3.4 is zoning bylaw amendment application number Z 20 2023 South Line B. And it's a consent and zoning amendment for a new lot. The legal description part lot six and seven, concession three, SDR Osprey, part one, plan 16R 10959, municipality of Gray Highlands. The civic address is. 267 126 South Line B. The notice of this public meeting was mailed by Standard Mail on the 5th of June 2023 to the property owner and to all property owners within 120 meters of the subject property, in addition to all agencies and persons identified in the Planning Act. At this time, Council will hear presentations by the applicant or their agent. Is there somebody? Okay. <laughs> this is working out really comment. well. <laughs> go ahead, Claire. Thank you. Uh, we'll just go to the next slide, please. Uh, the lands are located at 267126 South Line B in the municipality of Great Highlands, uh, located on the south side of South Line B with a lot area of 40 hectares and a lot frontage of 400 meters onto South Line B. Uh, the lands are a rural parcel of land with a single detached dwelling, barn, and accessory uh, building that's used for commercial use. Next slide, please. Uh, the application in front of you is for a zoning bylaw amendment that will um, implement a consent. Uh, the lands are zoned rural, uh, hazard, rural, commercial, and agricultural. And the purpose of this proposed zoning bylaw amendment is to rezone a portion of the lands to implement the consent uh, and remove the rural commercial zone from the severed lot uh, to ensure it's fully on the retained lands. The effect of the zoning bylaw amendment will rezone the lands to rural, uh, rural with an exception, rural commercial, hazard, and agricultural. The rural exception RU477 zone will recognize a lot frontage of 100 meters on the severed lands, and the rural commercial zone will be um, will be shifted to remain on the retained lands and will be amended to permit a minimum interior side yard setback of eight meters. And the uh, uh, consent application was approved uh, at the June 13th uh, Committee of Adjustment meeting. Next slide, please. I'll just briefly touch on the considerations for the irregular lot configuration. Um, so really, uh, the irregular lot lines are due to the existing farm cluster that is um, centrally located on the subject lands, um, and which requires the proposed lot line to be shifted west, uh, reducing lot frontage. Um, and then the location of the C4 zone uh, is uh, proposed to be adjusted. Um, as you can tell in this figure, it does not align with the actual location of the rural commercial use. Um, and a building envelope is possible in that northwest corner of the proposed severed lot or of the severed lot uh, shown in blue there. Next slide, please. Uh, the lands are designated rural hazard and agricultural. Um, the proposed development is compatible with the rural, the rural landscape and can be serviced on rural service levels. Um, a small portion of the lands are designated agricultural. However, these will remain entirely intact and are not uh, impacted by the proposed zoning bylaw amendment. Um, MDS calculations were conducted and MDS is met. Next slide, please. And this is just a photo of the subject lands taken from uh, South Line B. Next slide. And that concludes my comments and I can take any questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And at this time, we'll have the municipal planner advise of any comments received. Uh, planner Pasha. You chair. Um, so Great County Planning and Development have stated that they have no concerns with the subject application, provided that the concerns from the consent application B06-2023 were are addressed. And those concerns were related to just the 70 the D6 guidelines of the 70 meter setback. Uh, Saugeen Valley Conservation Authority has stated that they have no objections to the subject proposal. Gray Island's Building Services have stated that Building Services has no concerns with the proposal. The applicant is to be advised that the setbacks from the septic system must conform to the requirements in Part 8 of the Ontario Building Code. The entire septic system must be located on the property it serves and must maintain a setback from the property line no less than 3 meters. Gray Island's Environmental Services have stated that they have no concerns. 
Rhode Island's Transportation Services have stated that the proponent will be required to obtain an approved entrance permit for the severed parcel, which is also a condition of the consent. Uh, and Rhode Island's Emergency Services uh, have stated that they have no comments or concerns. That is all. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments from members of council of either our planner or the agent? Okay, not seeing anything. Any person present wishing to object to or support the proposed zoning bylaw amendment or have any comments or questions, please indicate and state your name and address. Anybody from the public wishing to speak on this file? Okay, I'm not seeing any hands being raised. Any last questions from members of council? Okay, as there's no further discussion, this application will be forwarded to a future council meeting for further consideration. So any more files for you, Claire? Oh, I'm all done now, okay. thank you. All right, thank you, good night. Okay, item 3.5 is zoning bylaw amendment application number Z22, 2023, Fairmount Farms. The legal description is part lot 15, concession 7, part 1, plan 16R, 11549, and part of south half lot 15, concession 7, except part 1 on plan 16R, 11307, Euphrasia, Gray Highlands, and it has a civic address of 155900 7th line. The notice of this public meeting was mailed by Standard Mail on the 5th day of June, 2023, to the property owner and to all property owners within 120 meters of the subject property, in addition to all agencies and persons identified in the Planning Act. At this time, Council will hear presentations by the applicant or their agent. Is somebody representing this file that would? Okay, Genevieve Scott, I see your hand raised. So, Deputy Clerk. Uh, thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, can everyone hear me all right? We can hear you. We just can't see you. Okay. Hold on two seconds. Let me fix that. There we go. That's, that's better. Um, is, so for those, of, I think everyone knows me by now. It's Genevieve Scott from Quest of Planning Consultants. Uh, we've been retained by the applicant, Mr. John Wiley, with respect to the subject zoning bylaw amendment application. Um, this, this zoning bylaw uh, is intended to implement a uh, consent to sever that was approved on uh, June 8th by the municipality. So uh, just to give you a little bit of a background, um, the subject property is located on seventh line and it's about 61 hectares in area now. Um, the property um, contains a lane that runs through the, uh, the sort of the center of it and um, the western portion is actively cropped by Mr. Wiley. The, the consent that uh, uh, was approved is for a 1.1 hectare parcel in the, uh, the south uh, east corner of the, the parcel, and it's for residential purposes. It has about 71 meters of frontage, and so the, um, the zoning bylaw will not only implement the approved consent, but it will also um, provide minor relief from uh, the frontage requirements for both the severed and retained lot. Uh, as part of the uh, pre-submission consultation, uh, we did apply for an entrance permit, which has been approved in principle by uh, municipal staff. And um, we have been, uh, uh, we completed MDS setback um, calculations for the, uh, the severance as well. Uh, uh, the MDS setbacks can be met. 
Uh, and there will also be a um, development setback from the, uh, the on-site wetland as well. That will provide about an acre of developable area for the, for the residents. So that's about it. If anybody has any questions for me, I'm happy to answer them. Okay. We'll go to our planner first to advise of any comments received. Planner Payne. So comments received from Great County Planning and Development are as follows. Uh, provided that the mitigation measures in the environmental impact assessment are implemented and county forestry and trails requirements are met, county planning staff have no concerns with the subject application. From the Gray Salbel Conservation Authority, the GSCA has said generally it has no objection to the subject application for consent to sever a new lot for single residential uh, development. All site alteration and development should be located outside of the identified hazardous area and a permit will be required for development on the site. The proposed development on the site will need to be in compliance with all relevant GSCA regulation policies. The Gray Highlands Building Department, Fire and Emergency Services Department, and Gray Highlands, or, sorry, and Environmental Services Department uh, have no concerns at this time. And the Gray Highlands Transportation and Public Spaces Department has said that the proponent will be required to obtain an improved entrance permit for the severed parcel. Okay. Did you have anything to add on the purpose and the effect, or did Genevieve cover everything? Sorry about that. Yes, the purpose and effect was very well covered by Genevieve, but just to clarify, I will say that the purpose of the zoning bylaw amendment is as follows. It will rezone the severed property from rural to rural residential. It will provide relief for the deficient lot frontage for the severed lot. The provision is 100 meters, the proposal is 71. To, it will also provide uh, for the deficient lot frontage for the retained lot. The provision is a minimum of 100 meters and the proposal reduces it to 72.5 meters. And finally, it will uh, set site uh, specific provisions that will ensure a minimum, minimum distance separation compliance between any new dwelling on the severed lot and nearby barns on neighboring lots and will remove the following, uh, sorry, the holding provision on the severed lot in relation to the proximal wetland feature. I also did have one pub, uh, comment from the public. The neighbor uh, to pro no, one property to the north has said that she wishes to comment on this application to make the township aware of the risk of sellers severing and potentially listing lands for sale while in an act of severance in the future. The property that they purchased from this applicant was still in an incomplete severance at the time of the uh, APS and when that was signed, it was disclosed to them, but there was no time to access land survey, etc. It ended up that the property was 18% smaller than advertised and signed upon in the APS. Uh, that's the agreement, uh, agreement rather of purchase and sale. Uh, hopefully committee members and residents can view this past outcome as a learning tool and that these potential issues can be on the radar uh, and should a severed property be listed and so sold when in active severance. I know as our first farm property purchase, we have learned our lesson to never sign an agreement of purchase and sale without land survey in hand. Okay, that's uh, more of a civil matter than, um, than a planning matter. So, okay, but it is good information. Okay. Uh, thank you for that. Are there any questions from members of council for either our planner or the agent for this file? Okay. Any person present wishing to object to or support the proposed zoning bylaw amendment or have any comments or questions, please indicate and state your name and address. Is anybody from the public wishing to speak? on this file. Again, on the phone, uh, star nine or the raise hand feature on a computer. Okay, I'm not seeing anything. Are there any questions, comments? 
last chance for council members. Okay, thank you. That uh, letter that was read by our planner will be included in the final report when it comes back to council. So as there's no further discussion, this application will be forwarded to a future council meeting for further consideration. Okay, thank you, Genevieve. Okay, item 3.6 is zoning bylaw amendment application number Z27, 2023, fourth concession B, a C4 shop. Legal description is the east half lot 26, concession four, Osprey, Gray Highlands, with a civic address of 349250, fourth concession B. The notice of this public meeting was mailed by standard mail on the second day of June, 2023, to the property owner and to all property owners within 120 meters of the subject property, in addition to all agencies and persons identified in the Planning Act. At this time, Council will hear presentations by the applicant or their agent. Is there an agent wishing to speak or the applicant on this file? Uh, Planner Payne, do you Unfor have information? Sorry. Uh, unfortunately, the agent and the applicant could not make it to this evening's meeting, so I have been asked to present on their behalf. Okay. So so then I'll go to this. At this time, the municipal planner will advise of any comments received and will provide an overview of the purpose and effect of the bylaw. So planner Payne, please. Thank you. So the purpose and effect of the bylaw is to amend a portion of the subject lands from agriculture to rural commercial with an exception, in addition to all uses that are permitted in the C4 zone. The exception will permit the fabrication, manufacturing, storage, and wholesale of automotive or agricultural components, a sawmill operation, including the assembly, storage, and wholesale of wood furniture products, the assembly, storage, and wholesale of plastic furniture, and the construction, storage, and sale of garden sheds. In terms of comments, the Great County uh, Planning Department had the following comment. The county planning staff have no concerns with the subject application provided that D6 guidelines can be addressed. The Nottawasega Valley Conservation Authority had the following comment. MVCCA staff had, uh, has no natural can hazard concerns with the, uh, the proposed development. Gray Highlands Building Services said, the applicant is to be advised that a building permit will be required for the proposed development. As part of the permit submission, the building matrix shall identify the occupancy classification, a full floor plan showing the location of the equipment and storage areas shall be submitted as part of the building permit application. All construction shall conform to the requirements in the Ontario Building Code, along with the applicable law in place at the time of permit submission. Gray Highlands Environmental Services has no concerns at this time. Gray Highlands Transportation and Public Spaces Services uh, says that an entrance permit will be required to upgrade the existing entrance to small scale commercial classification. No other concerns or comments from that, uh, from Gray Highlands Transportation Services at this time. And Gray Highlands Emergency Services has no concerns at this time. Okay, thank you for that. Are there any questions for the our planner from members of council? We're pretty quiet tonight. Okay, I'll go to the public. Any person present wishing to object to or support the proposed zoning bylaw amendment or have any comments or questions, please indicate and state your name and address. Is anybody wishing to speak on this file from, from the public? Okay, I'm not seeing any hands raised. Okay, last chance for council members. 
Okay. As there's no further discussion, this application will be forwarded to a future council meeting for further consideration. Is everybody okay to try to keep going right to the end? I'll check again in a little bit. Okay, item 3.7 is zoning bylaw amendment application number Z26-2023. And for an OFDU um, MDS 1 on the south line B. The legal description is lot 16 to 17, concession 3, SDR Osprey in Gray Highlands with a civic address of 267360 south line B. The notice of this public meeting was mailed by standard mail on the second day of June 2023 to the property owner and to all property owners within 120 meters of the subject property. In, in addition, <clears throat> excuse me, in addition to all agencies and persons identified in the Planning Act. At this time, Council will hear presentations by the applicant or their agent. Is there somebody representing this file that would like to speak? Planner Payne? So unfortunately, the agent and applicant were not able to uh, join us tonight. I'll be making the presentation on their behalf. Okay, so we'll go to our municipal planner who will advise of any comments received and will provide an overview of the purpose and the effect of the bylaw. Go sure. ahead, Planner Payne. So the effect of this bylaw is to amend a portion of the subject lands from rural to rural commercial with an exception. The exception will permit the proposed on-farm diversified use along with the provisions of section 5.13 and 8.4 of the Grey Highland Zoning Bylaw 2004-50 and will permit an MDS-1 setback of 315 meters. On lands zone C4-486, the following uses and provisions shall be permitted in addition to the provisions of the C4 zone. The fabrication, manufacturing, storage, and wholesale of automotive or agricultural components. A sawmill operation, including the assembly, storage, and wholesale of wood and furniture project, or, sorry, wood furniture products. The assembly, storage, and wholesale of plastic furniture, and the construction, storage, and sale of garden sheds. Further, an MDS-1 setback of 315 meters is permitted. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Andy, I believe this is a different file. This oh, is my bad. I've gone ahead on you. Sorry there. <laughs> yeah. Apologies. We'll backtrack on that. Yeah. Okay, so that last comment is to be disregarded. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, yes. So, yeah, sorry about that, Cheryl. And this is uh, Z26, Andy was speaking to Z27, 2023, I believe. Okay, the whole, yeah. okay. Or if right. you're speaking to that 30, yeah. So you're going to start over? Yes, correct. Okay. Um, oh, we can, uh, I believe Eli Shirk is in the attendance. He's the agent for this file. Okay. Uh, Eli has raised his hand. does get a little confusing when we've got 11 files in front of us. Hey, Eli, if you just unmute. There we go. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, I'm, I'm here on behalf of the Apple, uh, the owner regarding a, a zoning amendment. So we, they'd like to rezone a portion of the property for to allow for a workshop. And um, Pasha can probably answer your questions if any questions, and I'm here too if needed. Okay. So stay on the line. We'll go to our municipal planner who will advise of comments received and perhaps um, expand on the, the overview uh, or on the purpose and the effect of the bylaw. Planner Pasha. Sure. So 
The subject property is a 64 hectare parcel of land that has frontage onto South Line B and is located approximately 1.7 kilometers south southeast of Wareham. The subject property contains a residential dwelling, a sow barn, and with 300 farro and a horse and buggy shed. The property is designated as agriculture, rural, and hazard within both the Great County and Great Highlands official plan. The property is zoned as agriculture A1, rural RU and RE with the holding provision and hazard H within the Greyhound zoning bylaw 2450. The proposed development will be located within an area of the property that is designated and zoned as rural. The applicant is proposing to repurpose a portion of the existing horse and buggy shed into an on-farm diversified use on the subject property. Currently, the applicant is using a 60 square meter area of the existing structure as a home industry building to construct cabinet drawers. The proposal is to expand the floor area of the workspace to a 150 square meter uh, area, which is beyond the permitted maximum area of home industry and therefore requires a rezoning under the OFDU policies. The applicant requires zoning amendment for the proposed OFDU to be permitted on the subject lands as it is not permitted as of right within the RU zone. And due to the pre presence of a neighboring, neighboring livestock facilities, the applicant also requires a relief from the MDS-1 setback provisions. In terms of overview purpose and effect, the effect of this bylaw is to amend a portion of the subject lands from rural to rural commercial with the, with an exception 480, uh, 484. The 484 exception will permit an, an MDS-1 setback of 350 meters. Um, in terms of comments received, Gray County planning staff have stated that provided D6 guidelines can be addressed, county planning staff have no concerns. Um, Saugeen Valley Conservation Authority has stated that SVC has no objections to the proposal for the described zoning bylaw amendment application as it does not impact any natural hazards or natural heritage features. Gray Highlands building staff have stated that the applicant is to be advised that a building permit will be required for the change of use included in the permit submission um, a, and included in the permit submission a structural analysis of the structure changing the use from low human occupancy into a workshop will be required a building matrix and an equipment layout showing storage areas and what type of materials will be stored within the structure. All construction must conform to the requirements of the Ontario Building Code and all applicable law in place at the time of permit submission. Gray Highlands Transportation staff have stated that an entrance permit will be required, or will be required to, be, to upgrade the entrance for small scale commercial use. Gray Highlands fire, fire and Emergency Services have stated that they have no concerns and so has Gray Islands Environmental Services. I believe I have a letter from the neighboring owner um, stating that they have no concerns. Let me just pull it up. Uh, the, the letter came in a bit afterwards. Is this the neighbor where the MDS is not being yeah. met? That is correct. Yes. Okay. Uh, the neighbor uh, has stated that I have no concerns that the proposed rezone area and workshop do not meet the required MDS setback for my pig barn and sheep barn and that uh, I may be restricted from future livestock expansion. Okay. And that is all. And that is everything. Okay. And just to be um, clear, they are asking for 150 square meters shop or that's the plan but they would be able to expand to 250 without coming back for a zoning bylaw amendment, it just mean a, another building permit, but is that correct? Yes, that would be another building permit. And I believe that would also be another site plan approval as it would be to make that 150 square meter shop, they would need to do a site plan approval. And if they want to expand it afterwards, they would need an additional amendment to that site plan approval. Okay, all right, okay. Any questions, comments from members of council for our planner or the agent for this file? Okay, not seeing anything. Any person present wishing to object to or support the proposed zoning bylaw amendment or have any comments or questions, please indicate and state your name and address. Is there anybody from the public wishing to speak on this file?
Okay, I'm not seeing any hands. Last chance for council members. Okay, as there's no further discussion, this application will be forwarded to a future council meeting for further consideration. Thank you, Eli. Okay, the next item is 3.8, Zoning Bylaw Amendment Application Number Z30-2023, West Back Line C4 Shop. Legal description is Part Lot 121, Concession 3, SWTSR Artemisia, as in GS115330, Gray Highlands, and it has a civic address of 734796. West Back Line. The notice of this public meeting was mailed by Standard Mail on the second day of June 2023 to the property owner and to all property owners within 120 meters of the subject property, in addition to all agencies and persons identified in the Planning Act. At this time, Council will hear presentations by the applicant or their agent, and I believe Pan Planner Payne said the agent and the applicant are not in attendance. So um, we'll let you uh, <laughs> carry on. So we'll go, um, yeah, so our municipal planner will advise of any comments received and will provide an overview of the purpose and effect of the bylaw. Planner Payne. Certainly, and my apologies for any confusion caused by my, my miscue there. <laughs> That's okay. All right. So the effect of this bylaw is to amend a portion of the subject lands from rural to rural commercial with an exception. The exception will permit the proposed on-farm diversified use along with the provisions of section 5.13 and uh, 8.4 of the Grey Highland Zoning Bylaw 2004-50 and will permit an MDS1 setback of 315 meters. So the C4-486 exception uh, will uh, allow the following uses and provision. The fabrication, manufacturing, storage, and wholesale of automotive or agricultural components, a sawmill operation including the assembly, storage, and wholesale of wood furniture products, the assembly, storage, and wholesale of plastic furniture, and the construction, storage, and sale of garden sheds. Further, an MBS-1 setback, setback of 315 meters is permitted. Uh, at this time, I think I should probably explain why the nuance, uh, the nuance behind permitting the reduced setback. Um, the setback that would be required by the MBS-1 calculation would be actually closer to 540 meters. However, because the neighboring property has a sheep farm, which is actually 500, close to 544, 540 meters away, as well as a cow, cattle barn containing 30 cattle that is uh, close to 400 meters away and a horse barn that is 315 meters away. Um, the MDS becomes cumulative in nature and is not measured from each individual barn. Um, that is how the, that is the nuance of the MDS calculation. Um, they become cumulative in nature and uh, staff have advised and been advised rather by uh, OMAFRA staff that the municipality does have the latitude to make an exception to uh, this particular uh, type of uh, calculation due to that cumulative nature. So it's worth mentioning here that each of the individual uh, calculations can be met. Um, staff got their heads together and spoke with OMAFRA staff about this particular situation, as well as Planner Pasha's file. Um, and we do have the latitude to provide an exception, uh, given that the minimum distance separation that would normally be required, um, if it weren't cumulative, uh, could be uh, actually met. Uh, I'm wondering whether uh, Manager Rapke might have anything to add to that particular uh, blurb okay. that I've just spoken. Thank you, Manager Rapke. 
Yes, thank you, Chair Allen. The other element there is that this is for an on-farm diversified use, and in particular, an industrial-based one. And the MDS guideline released by the province says not to subject these to MDS in the first place. It's only the Great Highlands official plan that chooses to do that, that even requires this calculation. So if the guideline were adhered to, there, would, there wouldn't even be relief being provided. If this were a house, for example, it'd be a different story. It'd say, move, move your house somewhere else. Um, but there's a lot of latitude for discretion given the use that's, that's uh, proposed here. Okay, thank you. And just for information, when you say it's cumulative, are, are those three distances added together or because that would be a, an incredible distance to have to meet? No, they're not added together straight up. Um, there is, you know, a, a pretty complex uh, calculation made. Um, they okay. do have, like, the formula itself is is built to accommodate the, the or at least to calculate uh, based on the different types of uh, flooring and livestock within the barn. So um, the explanation that we got from OMAFRA is that. Uh, the nuance in that scenario can be accounted for by the latitude provided to the lower tier municipality. Okay. Manager Rapke, did you? Sorry. Yeah. Manager Rapke? The other element here in, in talking with OMAFRA, most uh, big time farmers, the ones that MDS was really made for, kind of farm one thing. So if you're a pig farmer, you put in a pig farm and a pig barn, and then you put another pig barn right next to the pig barn, which is then why it makes the MDS cumulative because it's pretty stinky at the same spot and then you're measuring from the nearest barn. Here we have a pig barn that's way far away. It meets the pig barn MDS and then you have a horse barn that's the closest thing and then it's taken the addition of the pig barn and then you have to measure from the horse barn and the stink's not really cumulative spatially that way. Right, okay. All right. It just to clarify, there are three horses in the horse barn that you would need to have a 540 minimum distance separation from. Right. Okay. All right. Okay. Yes. So is that um, is that the extent of your report, Planner Payne? That's the purpose and effect. Did you want me to go over the comments? Uh, yes, please. Okay. So from Great County Planning, we have that provided the D6 guidelines can be addressed. County planning staff have no further concerns. From Gray Highlands Building, we have that the applicant is to be advised that a change of use permit will be required. Depending on the construction of the existing structure, a full structure review, structural rather review of the existing building will be required. A full equipment layout shall be submitted as part of the building permit application. From Gray Highlands Transportation and Public Spaces, we have an entrance permit will be required to upgrade the entrance for small scale commercial use. And from Gray Highlands Fire and Emergency Services, as well as Environmental Services, we have no comments or concerns on this file. Okay, thank you for that. And if are there any questions or comments from members of council? I see two. Uh, Mayor McQueen had his hand up there first, so I'll go to Mayor McQueen and then to Councillor Allwood. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll take my hand down. Um, yeah, just back about the MDS to maybe toward Matt Moore. Is this something? Is this a new calculation? Because I know they did some changes to it, but uh, with the accumulative effect, is that is it per, per farm, or or could it be you could have you could have receptors in all different directions that could be a cumulative effect or is it a cumulative effect from one farm? I think this is all on the one farm and I don't, yeah. I guess we've just never come across this before. Manager Rapke? It's all on one farm. It, it doesn't come into play that often because typically you might have a little horse barn and then the pigs or the sheeps or the beef. This is a weird one in that there, there's three separate things happening in all different places. And individually like when the permit was issued for the pig barn which we looked into this too that mds was done proper and it, what you don't do it cumulatively to that new barn it's for the mds2 purpose but then the inverse mds1 and the neighboring one has to incorporate all of them so you can actually create an mds conflict by following the mds rules okay interesting okay Thank you for that, uh, Councillor Allwood. 
Uh, thank you, Chair uh, Allen. Just uh, on, on the uh, usage for that uh, C4, when Planner Payne was mentioning that, he didn't mention the concrete casting shop that will actually be there. Can we get a bit more detail on what that entails or? Certainly. Um, oh, sorry. Um, yes, the uh, agent has said that uh, in general, they would be casting um, small landscaping type decorative items, um, perhaps garden gnomes. I didn't get into that much detail about that particular uh, uh, question. Um, it is, we did actually internally consider adding the specific concrete use to the exception. However, we believe that the uh, exception already covers off alongside the uh, permissions of the parent zone, what is being asked for here. Um, so if you look at the exception, I believe it says, um, sorry, I'm just gonna have to scroll back up. The fabrication, manufacturing, storage, and wholesale of automotive or agricultural components, a sawmill operation, including the assembly, storage, and wholesale of wood furniture products, and the assembly, storage, and wholesale of plastic furniture, and the construction, storage, uh, and sale of garden sheds. So when we looked at this, I believe we said that it's a similar use in terms of intensity and would not require any additional permissions or studies in, uh, on top of the manufacturing, storage, and wholesale of automotive, automotive and agricultural components. So because it's not going to be a more intense use than is already permitted on this, uh, for this exception, it was not proposed that we uh, say anything in detail regarding the uh, forming of the concrete, uh, um, let's say lawn gnomes <laughs> uh, in this scenario. Okay. Any follow-up, Councillor Elwood? Uh, I mean, I was just uh, concerned that uh, perhaps there'd be, uh, you know, concrete trucks coming in and out of the property. But uh, I guess given the, the nature of the casting, it would probably be something they'd be doing on site. But that was my uh, only issue. Lander paint. I, I would think so. This is going to be a smaller operation than, yeah. than would require cement trucks in. No, it won't be requiring cement trucks. The concrete uh, components will not be, you know, uh, created on site. And we're, we're told that the concrete would be shipped in through shipping trucks as is normal for this scale of building. And use. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from members of council? Okay. Any person present wishing to object to or support the proposed zoning bylaw amendment or have any comments or questions, please indicate and state your name and address. Is there anybody from the public wishing to speak on this file? You could raise your hand on a phone star nine or the raise hand feature on the computer. Okay, I'm not seeing anything. And so no other questions or comments from council. Okay, as there's no further discussion, this application will be forwarded to a future council meeting for further consideration. Okay, item 3.9 is zoning bylaw amendment application number Z24-2023, the former bargain center. The legal description is lot three, block F, uh, plan 582, Markdale, TW, GS 159463, Gray Highlands, and it has a civic address of 14 Main Street West. The notice of this public meeting was mailed by standard mail on the fifth day of June, 2023 to the property owner and to all property owners within 120 meters of the subject property. In addition to all agencies and persons identified in the Planning Act, 
At this time, council will hear a presentation by the applicant or their agent. Is there somebody representing this file? Okay, Lester Brubaker, Deputy Clerk, if you could move them over, please. There we go. There we go. You can hear us, Larry? Yes, we can. Uh, I'm Michael Becker and Matt uh, Lester Brubaker. We're from Imagine Incorporated. We are uh, representing the owner in this application. Uh, the purpose of the application was to amend the zoning bylaw to zone the subject lands from downtown commercial. Oh, there's a safe line there. Uh, to a downtown commercial with an exemption to provide relief from the parking requirements in section 5.14.A of the zoning bylaw for the development of an additional residential unit. The building will contain five residential units and two commercial units following approval. And I believe I'll pass it off to uh, Planner Payne for any further clarifications, and we're available to answer any questions from councillors. Okay. Um, so at this time, our municipal planner will advise of any comments received and perhaps provide um, further overview of the purpose and the effect of the bylaw. Planner Payne? Certainly. Uh, in terms of the overview, uh, the purpose and effect, the effect of this bylaw is to amend the zoning of the subject property from downtown commercial to downtown commercial with an exception. In addition to all uses that are permitted in the C1 zone, exception 481 will permit the minimum total of parking spaces that shall be required for any combination of permitted uses to five. I believe uh, we have an image of the revised site plan that manager Rapke will show in a moment. The required spaces have no minimum setback from any lot line. The required parking spaces have no minimum aisle or driveway requirements, and there is no required minimum number of loading spaces. In terms of comments from uh, the County of Gray, we have from planning staff, County and planning staff have no concerns with the subject application. From Gray Highlands Building Services, uh, the applicant has received a building permit for interior renovations to the existing apartments. A fire escape is a requirement for the three floor units. Um, renovations to create the new dwelling unit on the main floor will require a building permit and must conform to the requirements of the Ontario Building Code and all applicable law in place at the time of permit submission and unprotected openings are not permitted on any wall less than four feet from any lot line. From Gray Highlands Environmental Services, from Gray Highlands Transportation and Public uh, Spaces, and from Gray Highlands Fire and Emergency Services, there are no comments or concerns at this time. Okay, thank you for that. Any questions for our planner or the agent from members of council? Okay, I do have one. Um, so we're reducing uh, the requirement is nine for the residential and eight for the commercial and we are reducing that to five overall. So a question for the agent or for the your the applicant. So um, what what's your expectation of the municipality regarding parking? If if uh, we're not requiring you to provide it, uh, do you have any expectation of the municipality? Uh, I believe the intention was for any uh, users of the commercial space to make use of the uh, municipal parking lot immediately south of the uh, building or the uh, on-street parking as uh, is typical for downtown Markdale. It's physically impossible to provide even the base number of uh, parking lots if we were to leave the development alone. Right. Okay. 
so you you really don't have any further um, expectation of the municipality. No. Okay. Thank you for that. So no other questions or comments from members of council? Uh, Mayor McQueen? Well, I guess through you, Mr. Chair, my question would, would be through you to the uh, pr proposal and the proponents would be, would they uh, uh, like the municipality to create municipal parking in the downtown? Um, I do not see the need to create additional parking for this amendment or for this proposal, but uh, it would be uh, something to think about for the future if there is more development within downtown Markdown. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any person present wishing to object to or support the proposed zoning bylaw amendment or have any comments or questions, please indicate and state your name and address. Is there anybody from the public wishing to speak on this file? If you could raise your hand. Okay, I'm not seeing any hands being raised. Further discussion from council? Councillor Allwood. Uh, thank you, Chair Allen. I, I believe Planner Payne mentioned that uh, Manager Rep, he was gonna point out where those five parking spots were. I mean, for the benefit of the public, can we show, is there something we can show them? Thank you. Did my screen share briefly earlier? It did um, at the very beginning of the presentation and then it uh, stopped. Not a good thing there. I think I'm doing I can tell you that uh, I think so. Oh, there you go. Here we go. Is this the updated one, Andy? It is. Okay, yeah, so this, I think it was revised. There was spaces showing kind of on this bottom edge here. And then when you get into the aisle width requirements and whatnot, they're not really real spaces. So it was revised to show what's kind of five practical spaces on site. Okay. And then, so this would be the municipal property on this end, and then this is Main Street on the other side. Okay, Councillor Allwood, any follow-up? No, thank you, Chair Allen. Okay, and Mayor McQueen. Yeah, you're on mute. Sorry, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, through you to plan and wrap that I don't see the overview. Is there a lane? Then that goes on the back, must be a lane that cuts across the back of all those properties to get access to that area then, is that correct? Because at one time, food land, food town would, would have been there somewhere. So there's going to have to be configurations of where that old building was. So there must be a laneway that accesses that uh, those spaces. I think it comes off of Argyle Street, doesn't it? Right now, it's, 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 it's physically just... Uh, that downtown lot, if you will, like I think it's gravel up to the back there. I'm going to open my GIS here. There is a part that you can see um, in the parcel fabric that's separate from the rest of it that goes behind a few of them. I'm not sure if it extends here and you wouldn't necessarily see easements either. Um, so there's potentially easements on the municipally owned lot that would prohibit building there. But now that I'm looking at the old imagery, the IGA building actually, you couldn't get to this building without kind of encroaching on the neighboring abutting lot that fronts onto, onto Main Street. So that would be something to consider with any redesign of that lot. Okay, and I see, I'm oh, sorry, Mayor McQueen, follow up. 
Yeah, because I, I remember when that building was there, that things were pretty tight along there. So uh, as we go through our, re, our downtown vitalize, revitalization and, and uh, whoever uh, develops down there, there is that chunk of land. So that's going to have to be, that access is going to have to be taken consideration in the sense of that uh, whole downtown proposal. So I know it's a parking lot today, but <clears throat> there will be a, a re you know a redevelopment as, uh, as the plans moving forward. So it may look differently, it, different than a parking lot. That's yeah. okay. That's thank you. One of the reasons I asked what their expectation of the municipality was, because things do change, and then um, that access could be quickly removed. So, um, the agent, would you? I see your hand up. Would you like to make comment? Uh, yeah, we do have a, we do have a right of way going across from I believe Arnold Street going across um, from there and access through the neighboring property to the northwest corner of the proposed property there is a right away. Yeah, I seem to remember when the food town was there that it kind of created a little kind of alcove in there and I think that was probably the width of that right of way. So, okay, thank you for that. Um, last chance for comments or questions from members of council. Okay, as there's no further discussion, this application will be forwarded to a future council meeting for further consideration. Thank you, um, Lester, and, and I'm sorry, I didn't catch the other fellow's name. Uh, Michael, thank you. Michael, okay. Thank you very much. Okay, so we have two left. Is everybody okay to carry on, including staff? Okay, I'm not seeing anybody. Everybody's okay, all right. Okay, lots of thumbs up. Okay, two more to go, doing pretty well. Item 3.10 is zoning bylaw amendment application number Z28-2023, Toronto Road, mixed use. The legal description is Lot 1 RCP 818 Flesherton, Grey Highlands, and Lot 2 RCP 818 Flesherton, Grey Highlands, and with a civic address of 4 and 8 Toronto Road. The notice of this public meeting was mailed by standard mail on the 5th day of June 2023 to the property owner and to all property owners within 120 meters of the subject property, in addition to all agencies and persons identified in the Planning Act. At this time, Council will hear presentations by the applicant or their agent, and I see Beverly Nicholson has their hand up. Clerk, uh, Deputy Clerk Van Alstein, if you could move them over, please. There we go. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, there we go. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. My name is Bev Nicholson. I'm a registered professional planner and I'm acting as agent for Mr. and Mrs. McCallum. Um, Mr. McCallum is also on the meeting. So if you have a specific question, hopefully I can answer them for you. The purpose and effect of the proposal is to allow an additional residential unit and an additional commercial units within the existing building footprint. That would mean that there would be three commercial in total and two residential up above. The relief is necessary also to the parking provisions to accommodate this. There's no, again, no change to the building footprint. So this is the space that we have. The property is currently within the settlement area, the county official plan. It is also within a settlement area for the municipal official plan. And it's also identified as within the downtown area. 
in the uh, community of Flesherton. You may have noticed there's been some um, fa refacing work done on the front of the buildings and some improvements to the buildings. And this property is at the corner of Highway 10 and County Road 4 or the Durham Road. The property is also currently zoned C1, downtown commercial. And while residential is a permitted use in addition to the commercial uses, the bylaw definition limits it to not within the same building. So the definition is proposed to be changed to allow residential within the same building to allow the additional unit. The parking provisions are also being uh, revised or amended uh, because we couldn't meet them with the setbacks that are required. Those spaces are currently existing and someone can park in there back into a lane and drive out onto Durham Road. So it's a, a safer setup uh, right now. We have reviewed the staff report and um, we've looked at the amendment proposed. It would be uh, amending the apartment definition, as I indicated, to allow the residential within a commercial building, and it would be granting relief to the parking. We appreciate the assistance staff have provided us in reaching this point, and we agree with the staff report, and we look forward to this proposal going forward in a bylaw format to council. If you have any questions, please, we're here. Okay. Thank you for that. And we'll now go to our municipal planner who will advise of any comments received and perhaps expand on the overview of the, or on the purpose and the effect of the bylaw. And uh, Planner Pasha. Bernie, thank you. Um, just a brief uh, history on the property. Uh, the current building or current building footprint has two commercial units on the ground floor and one residential unit on the top floor. So the applicant's proposing to, within that same footprint, adjust the floor area of each unit to turn it into three commercial units on the ground floor and two residential units on the top floor. Again, same footprint, nothing is being expanded in the same area. Um, the building has existed for a long time and has been used as a retail store, barber shop, coffee shop, and a bakery. And the residential apartment has been on that property for a long period of time. Um, the proposed uses for the com uh, commercial units on the ground floor are stated to be retail and uh, personal service. So in, for example, a hair salon, that's what being, what, what's being proposed for in the three commercial units uh, downtown. In terms of overview, so the purpose and effect, uh, the purpose of the zoning bylaw amendment is to rezone uh, the subject property from downtown commercial C1 to downtown commercial C1 uh, with the exception 452. Um, this and the following provisions will be permitted. Um, a mixed use dwelling is permitted with the definition, meaning one or two dwelling units that are contained within a building used for commercial purposes and that are situated above and or to the rear of the principal commercial use. Um, the gross floor area of a dwelling unit located on the ground floor of the building shall not exceed 50% of the gross floor area of the commercial portion of the building. Where a mixed-use dwelling is permitted, the intent is to permit any commercial use that is also permitted by the zone within a portion of a building that contains a mixed-use dwelling. So this will address the mixed-use portion of the proposal. And next thing is uh, notwithstanding requirements of section 5.14 of the bylaw 2004-50, which is the parking and the loading requirements, the minimum number, uh, total number of parking spaces that shall be required for any combination of permitted uses, uses shall be three. The required parking spaces have no minimum setback from any lot line, and the required parking spaces have no minimum aisle or driver requirements, and there is no required minimum number of loading spaces. So, uh, the reason for this proposal is because of the lack of parking uh, capability on the rear of the property. Um, right now, this property has is capable of housing having three parking spaces that would meet the parking space requirements in terms of lot dimensions and whatever our requirements are for uh, aisle widths and you know lot lot uh, interior side lot lines. But the 
uh, adding in more parking spaces would essentially need, cause the need for a portion of the building to be demolished so, to address that. And that didn't seem as uh, unlikely. At the same time, the parking uh, requirement that they need to add in is because of the addition of the uh, residential unit. Because of the commercial units that are already existing and the parking that is servicing them, and there's no change of use to that those commercial units, those park uh, the requirement of parking spaces don't need to be addressed for that part because it's considered illegal not performing. However, because of the addition of the residential unit, they now need to provide an additional parking space for that unit, uh, which they won't be able to because of the lack of space. Um, in terms of comments received, Gray uh, County Planning staff have reviewed the subject application and have no concerns. And, uh, and same thing with uh, County Transportation Services. They have reviewed the application and they stated that they have no concerns. Greyhounds Environmental Services have uh, stated that they have no comments or concerns. Greyhounds Transportation Service uh, have stated uh, that they have no concerns at this time. Greyhounds Building Services have stated that the applicant is to be advised that a building permit will be required for the proposed construction and must conform to the requirements of the Ontario Building Code and all applicable law in place at the time of permit submission. Greyhounds Fire and Emergency Services have no concerns from for the proposal. And that is all. Okay, thank you. Any comments or questions from members of council for either our planner or the agent? Councillor Wickens and then Councillor Dubik. Yeah, um, just the residential units, are they uh, are they planning to split uh, existing residential units on the upper floors or are they planning to build another one on on top of the uh, building to the north, or are they putting residential units on the ground floors? I just, just was, uh, it's unclear. Uh, Beverly. Thank you. There's currently two commercial and there will be three commercial on the main floor or the ground floor. There's one existing residential on the second floor and that will be converted to two. Okay. Thank you. And, Thank you. And Councillor Dubik. Hi there. Um, so just a question about um, the residential units, the residents and parking. Would and given the fact that you know there's only three parking spots, so um, and given that residents will need parking, you know, overnight if they do have cars, would they get first access to the parking spots, or like, is that being considered? Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, that was one of the considerations was to ensure that any overnight parking was accommodated. And since there'll be two units, we're assuming that there'd be you know, just two cars. Um, if there's guest parking, there's space, there may be some public area that uh, might be able to if there's guests. But at this point, that was the consideration was making sure overnight parking was accommodated. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments? I am going to ask the, uh, and hopefully the applicant will answer the same question I asked on the last file. What's your expectation of the municipality regarding parking um, if, if you cannot accommodate it on your own property? And we'll see if Ruben has raised his hand, so Deputy Clerk, if you could move Ruben over, please. You're unmuted, but I can't, we can't hear you. Perhaps I'm not going to get an answer from Ruben. Beverly, do you have uh, an answer for that? 
I understand that there is um, some parking at, behind the post office that might provide options for people. Uh, I'm not sure. I believe there's a little bit of on street, but um, that's whatever's existing is what would we would expect. Plus, there's the additional space, and if people parked uh, properly, they could probably put more cars in the in the space. Um, people who live there. Uh, maybe off going to work. So hopefully during the day, there's some use of that as well. So our expectation at this point, although it might be something to look at in the future, certainly is that um, our commercial can be accommodated. Okay, thank you. Ruben, are you able to speak now? I think maybe. Can you hear me? There we go. There we go. Oh, I had to get on another device. Look at that. Tech savvy over here. Uh, yeah, basically, uh, parting what? What Beverly had to say. So, because the the number of square foot uh, commercial space isn't changing, uh, the current parking that exists um, is uh, currently accommodated by the municipal parking, the street parking along four, the street parking along ten, uh, and the additional space that we have at the back. So. In the purposes of the bylaw, the parking that we have allows for three spaces because it measures at 1.25 spaces plus the setbacks. But I can get more cars back there. Uh, before we started construction and had the dumpster park back there, I did have closer to five vehicles that could park on my property. Uh, my biggest consideration was making sure that the residential overnight parking was off the street. Uh, and that is accommodated and uh, obviously would be assigned to the residential tenant that addresses the question earlier from Councillor Dubik. Uh, and I do believe that the my review of the 2019 Chamber of Commerce parking study that I believe Council also received at the time indicates more parking than I initially uh, was aware of uh, in behind the hardware store and post office. At the Flushton Pond and along the uh, the streets, so it makes for the walking village aspect of Flusherton. Uh, I think it all falls in line. Okay, all right. Thank you for that. Okay, uh, last chance for any other council members. Okay, I'm not seeing any hands up. So, um, I forget where I was. I'm paperless now, so I don't get to cross something off my list. So I think I'm going to the public now. Is that right? <laughs> Any person present wishing to object to or support the proposed zoning bylaw amendment or have any comments or questions, please indicate and state your name and address. Anybody from the public wishing to speak on this file? Okay, I'm not seeing any hands. And one more last chance for members of council. Oh, Mayor McQueen. Oh, it Thank went you. off mute and then back on. So go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, just in general, I think in parking, I think there's one comment that Ruben did make that uh, uh, on-street parking, uh, to be on-street on parking, but during the winter months, I think uh, there is a requirement to be off, off the main street for snow removal. And, and uh, I know we only seem to get that part of the year, but that is something that, that we all have to take in consideration as well. And uh, yes. as a snow removal and, and also those times when there's snow, snow uh, excessive snow is being removed and, and that type of thing. So just food for thought on that part. Okay, thank you. Okay, as there's no further discussion, this application will be forwarded to a future council meeting for further consideration. So thank you, Beverly and Ruben. Okay, our last one. Item 3.11 is zoning bylaw amendment application number Z25-2023, Harold Best Parkway, and it's a vacant lot on a private road. Legal description is lot 41, RCP 823, Artemisia, TW, GS107542, Gray Highlands, and it has a civic address of 20 
Harold Best Parkway. The notice of this public meeting was mailed by Standard Mail on the fifth day of June, 2023, to the property owner and to all property owners within 120 meters of the subject property, in addition to all agencies and persons identified in the Planning Act. At this time, Council will hear presentation by the applicant or their agent. Is there somebody representing this file that would like to speak? And Kevin Green has his hand raised. So Deputy Clerk Nostein, please. There we go. Uh, good evening, good people. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, representing the application as the owner, um, the current owner of the property. Uh, the purpose of the application is uh, we need to rezone the sublet lands to permit development on a private road as the property currently does not front on an improved, an improved public road. Uh, the parcel fronts onto Harold Best Parkway, which has quite a history of ownership and council dealings going back as far as the former municipality of Artemisia. Uh, the most current stab at fixing the ownership issue was uh, presented to council for February 6, 2017. Uh, where it was recommended by councillor, former councillor Desai and former deputy mayor Alde. Uh, that the municipality Gray Highlands take ownership of this road in order to, in order for the municipality to con continue to provide service. Uh, currently, right now, it's a fully serviced road by the municipality, but the ownership of the land road has been in question for probably 50 plus years. Um, being that the road is still designated a private road within the municipality Gray Highlands. Uh, therefore, the new dwelling cannot be erected on the subject property without an amendment. Uh, we're requesting rezoning that would place the subject lands into the R13 zone, which has been applied for other properties in Gray Highlands that lack the same frontage along that same public road. Uh, the latest was granted in 2009. Uh, and just note there's 10 other homes currently on that roadway. Okay, thank you for that, Kevin. And at this time, we'll have our municipal planner advise of any comments received. And again, perhaps um, expand on the purpose and the effect of the bylaw. And who do we have? Planner Pasha, please. So um, it's exactly as Kevin stated, the proposal is for a residential structure to be placed on a uh, road that is a private road and not a, a an improved public street. Um, the Harold Best Parkway does get service in, in forms of uh, maintenance and snow removal. Um, in terms of overview and, and the purpose and effect, the effect of this bylaw is to amend the subject lands from residential to residential with the exception 13. The exception will permit development on a property that does not have frontage on an improved public street. Um, in terms of comments received, Gray County planning staff have no concerns with the proposal, provided that the proposed development will remove as little trees as possible. Gray County Transportation Department has no concerns with the proposal. Gray Solver Conservation Authority has stated that they have no concerns with the proposal. Gray Highlands Building Department have stated that uh, they have no concerns with the application. All of proposed construction must conform with the requirements in the Ontario Building Code and any applicable law in place at the time of permit submission. Greyhound's transportation uh, staff have stated that they have no con comments or concerns from transportation and public spaces at this time. And lastly, Greyhound's environmental services have stated that they have no comments or concerns from environmental services. Okay, thank you for that. Are there any questions from members of council to either the applicant or our planner? Mayor McQueen. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, and, and through the applicant, uh, he raises a, an interesting point about a 2017 uh, uh, 
motion. So I think it's something maybe this council needs to follow up on in the sense of where that was or where that is at. So just a general comment on on that part because I I was there and I sort of remember that uh, as it was. But uh, anyway, maybe a, a follow up report needs to follow on that with regards to. Uh, the process that we're, he's going through, yes, I, you know, proper processes here, but uh, maybe we can get a follow up on that as well. Thank you. Okay, I'm sure Kevin agrees. <laughs> Any other comments or questions from council? Okay, I'll go to the public. Any person present wishing to object to? or support the proposed bylaw, the zoning bylaw amendment, or have any comments or questions, please indicate and state your name and address. I see there are two members of public left. If either one of you want to speak, please raise your hand. Okay, I'm not seeing any hands being raised. All right, any last comments from members of council? Okay, as there's no further discussion, this application will be forwarded to a future council meeting for further consideration. So thank you, Kevin. Thank you very much. Okay, good night. All right, that brings us to the end of our 11 files. So thank you, um, staff and council. We think we did pretty well. So I will declare this meeting adjourned at 6.52. All right. Thanks, Mr. Good night, Chair. everybody. Good, Good night.